This week we're covering Chapter 9, Early Childhood Cognitive Development. What will you learn in this chapter? Are young children selfish or just self-centered? Do children get confused if they hear two languages? And is preschool for play or learning? Thinking during early childhood, I'm going to discuss Piaget's pre-operational intelligence. It occurs around the ages 2 to 6. It suggests thinking occurs in symbols, symbolic thought, proposes reasoning processes not yet used, and includes language, imagination, and animism. Animism is the belief that natural objects and phenomena are alive. Continuing with Piaget <clears throat> and obstacles to logic. There are four limitations of pre-operational thought that make logic difficult until about age six. The first one is centration. This includes characteristic of pre-operational thought whereby a young child focuses or centers on one idea excluding all others and may include egocentrism. Egocentrism is Piaget's term for, young, for a young child's tendency to think about the world entirely from their own personal perspective. Then there is a focus on appearance. This is a characteristic of pre-operational thought whereby a young child ignores all attributes that are not apparent. There's also static reasoning. This is another characteristic whereby a young child thinks that nothing changes. Whatever is now has always been and always will be. And lastly is irreversibility. This is a characteristic whereby a young child thinks that nothing can be undone. A thing cannot be restored to the way it was before a change occurred. And continuing with Piaget, in terms of pre-operational thought, <clears throat> All four characteristics of pre-operational thought are evident in classic conservation task errors. Young children fail to understand conservation of liquids because they focus or center on what they see, appearance, noticing only the immediate static condition. It does not occur to them that they could reverse the process and recreate the liquid's level from a moment earlier. That is irreversibility. <laughs> All right, we're talking about this conservation thing here, and this is the principle that the amount of a substance remains the same, for example, is conserved when its appearance changes. Easy question and obvious answer. Above left, Sarah, age five, carefully make sure both glasses contain the same amount. Above right, when one glass of pink lemonade is poured into a wide jar, she triumphantly points to the tall glass as having more. Sarah is like all five-year-olds, and only a developmental psychologist or a seven-year-old child knows better. <clears throat> All right, there are multiple ways to test for conservation. Here in this graph lists one, two, three, four different ways to do this. If there are any children in your family that are before this age, you can try any of these out with them, and generally it's going to work. All right, continuing with Piaget, I say, for the most part, those things will work, but there are limitations. And as such, Piaget and conservation tasks require words. Modification of tasks, for example, simple and playful, have resulted in better performance of younger children. And lastly, Piaget underestimated cognition during early childhood. All right, moving on to Vygotsky and social learning. Social learning is, includes every aspect of a child's cognition and cognitive development and is embedded in social context. In other words, it is shaped by other people. They are apprentices in thinking. This is someone whose intelligent and intellectual growth is stimulated and directed by older and more skilled members of society. This includes mentors. Mentors present challenges. They offer assistance without taking over. They add crucial information and encourage motivation. 
<clears throat> Continuing with Vygotsky and social learning, there's the term scaffolding. This is a process by which people learn from others who guide their experiences and explorations. And the zone of proximal development. These are skills that a person can exercise only with assistance, not yet independently. All right, continuing with Vygotsky here, term over imitation. This is the tendency of children to copy an action that is not a relevant part of a behavior to be learned. This is common among two to six year olds when they imitate adult actions that are irrelevant and inefficient. They are socially motivated and universal to all cultures. Now we're going to discuss language as a tool in STEM learning. Words are the mediator between brain potential and comprehension. Language advances thinking. Internal dialogue and private speech develop, and social mediation. All the objects of a culture guide children, especially words. Culture may affect language and therefore math knowledge. STEM learning, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, the interest in these vocations begins with learning about math and science. All right, I'm going to cover Vygotsky again in terms of language. The underpinnings of math and physics de develop during preschool years. <clears throat> this is done using one-to-one -one correspondence, remembering time and dates, understanding sequence, knowing what numbers are higher than others, understanding how to make things move, and appreciating temperature effect. All right, continuing with Vygotsky again and language. <clears throat> this involves executive function or executive control. His cognitive ab ability to organize and prioritize the many thoughts that they have. It arises from various parts of the brain and allows a person to anticipate, strategize, and plan behavior. The components necessary for this are working memory, cognitive flexibility, and inhibitory control. If you don't remember, working memory is a part of executive function and is used to maintain attention to one thing over the many other things in our environment. All right, moving into children's theories and the theory theory. <clears throat> In this theory, children attempt to explain everything they see and hear. Theories do not appear randomly, as children develop theories about intentions before they employ their impressive ability to imitate. All right, continuing with children's theories. <clears throat> Candies in the crayon box. Anyone would expect crayons in a crayon box, but once a child sees that candy is inside, that child expects that everyone else will also know that candies are inside. This involves theory of mind, or folk psychology. It involves a person's theory of what other people might be thinking. It is slow to develop, but typically beginning in most children at about age four. It can be seen when young children try to escape punishment by lying. In order to have a theory of mind, children must realize that other people are not necessarily thinking the same thoughts that they themselves are. That realization is seldom achieved before age four. Brain and context. <clears throat> what strengthens theory of mind in young children? A child's ability to develop theories correlates with the maturity of the prefrontal cortex and with advances in executive processing. Practice, experience, and maturation are relevant, and context and culture matter. All 
All right, continuing with brain and context. Between ages 3 and 12, children become better liars. And between ages 4 and 5, the prefrontal cortex matures and contributes to advances in theory of mind and executive control. And social interactions with peers promote brain development. Now we've talked about the prefrontal cortex and I don't want this to make you think that it's developing that much during these years because it takes literally up until about age 25, 26 sometimes for the prefrontal cortex to fully develop. All right, still focusing on language here and learning. Language is pivotal to every kind of cognition in early childhood. <clears throat> Early childhood is a sensitive period, or best time to master vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. The average child knows about 100 to 2,000 words at age 2, and more than 5,000 to 30,000 at age 6. As they read stories to young children, many adults express exaggerated surprise, excitement, worry, and relief. They realize that words are better understood and remembered when they are connected to emotions. Continuing with language learning, something known as the vocabulary explosion. This is when vocabulary builds quickly and comprehension is greater than production. <laughs> Verbs, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, and many nouns are mastered during this time. <clears throat> and this involves fast mapping. Speeding a speedy and sometimes imprecise way in which children learn new words by tentatively placing them in mental categories according to their perceived meaning. Words in the limits of logic. The logical extension. This is closely related to fast mapping and occurs when children use words to describe other objects in the same category such as Dalmatian cows, because they've seen a Dalmatian dog, and they look over and they see a cow with black and white spots on it, and they call them Dalmatian cows. In another situation, bilingual children use code switching. This is when they encounter a word they do not know in one language and use the word from the language they do know in its place. And continuing with language learning, <clears throat> the grammar of language. These are the structures, techniques, and rules that communicate meaning. Word order and word repetition, prefixes and suffixes, intonation and emphasis are all involved. Overregulation is the application of rules of grammar even when exceptions occur. <clears throat> this makes language seem more regular than it actually is. By age four, many children over-regularize that final S, talking about foots, tooths, and mouses. This is actually evidence of increasing knowledge. Many children first say words correctly, feet, teeth, and mice, repeating what they have heard. Later, when they grasp the grammar and try to apply it, they over-regularize assuming that all constructions follow the regular path. And then there's pragmatics. This is practical use of language <clears throat> that includes the ability to adjust language communication according to audience and con context. Learning two languages. Language minority people are often disadvantaged if they do not speak the majority language. They have lower school achievement, self-esteem, and employment opportunities. The best language learning period is in early childhood. A bilingual brain may facilitate some resistance to neurocognitive disorders even. Uh, the message here is it's good to learn another language <clears throat> and best to do so in early childhood. Language losses and gains. Language shifts, becoming more fluent in the school language than in their home language. 
and the balanced lang bilingual as being fluent in two languages, not favoring one over the other. It occurs if adults talk frequently, listen carefully, and value both languages. Strategies and experiences to support literacy learning. One such is code-focused teaching. This is connecting letters with sounds to break the code from spoken to written words. There's also book reading, parent education, language enhancement, which is the expansion of vocabulary by mentor, and preschool programs which help with language acquisition. All right, now we're moving on to early childhood education. Homes and schools. Quality matters, but it may be difficult to judge. If the home educational environment is poor, a good preschool environment or good preschool program aids health, cognition, and social skills. If a family provides extensive learning opportunities and encouragement, the quality of the preschool is less crucial. Continuing with early childhood education, <clears throat> child-centered or developmental programs stress each child's development and growth. It supports children's natural inclination to learn through play rather than by following adult directions and encourages self-paced exploration and artistic expression and often shows the influence of Piaget or Vygotsky. All right, I'm going to focus on child-centered programs, and this includes Montessori, which you have either been in yourself or maybe at least heard of. Montessori schools emphasize individual pride and accomplishment, presenting literacy-related tasks such as outlining letters and looking at books. Another child-centered program is Reggio Emilia. This is an early childhood education program originating in Reggio Emilia, Italy, and it encourages each child's documented activity in a carefully designed setting. Then there are teacher-directed programs. These programs stress academic subjects taught by a teacher to an entire class. This helps children learn letters, numbers, shapes, and colors, as well as how to listen to the teacher and sit quietly. It makes a clear distinction between work and play, and is much less expensive since the child-adult ratio can be higher. All right, and in comparing child-centered and teacher-directed programs, most child-centered programs believe learning comes from within. They resist legislative standards and academic tests and argue social skills and creative play are essential. Whereas most teacher-directed programs instruct rather than facilitate learning, are more consistent in beliefs and behaviors, and are often influenced by parents who want academic skills and respect for authority to be taught. All right, there are also intervention programs, such as Head Start. <coughs> Excuse me. Most widespread, this is the most widespread early childhood education program in the United States. It began in 1965 and is funded by the federal government. Initially, the program was thought to be highly successful at raising children's intelligence. However, 10 years later, early gains were found to fade. All right, in terms of disaster recovery, the success of Head Start led to early Head Start for children such as this two-year-old in Biloxi, Mississippi. When Hurricane Katrina destroyed most of the community, it was the first program to re-emerge there. Small children recover from disasters more easily if their parents can re-establish a normal life.
All right, there are long-term gains from intensive programs. Early intervention is effective if it is sufficiently intense and involves effective teachers. Evidence includes the Perry High Scope, the Abecedarian, and Child Parent Centers, and all have shown positive results. All right, in terms of long-term program effectiveness, there are state programs. 40 states sponsor public education for younger children, although usually only for low-income four-year-olds. The leading state is Oklahoma, and only four states have high-quality programs. And those include Alabama, Alaska, North Carolina, and Rhode Island. And that concludes the lecture for Chapter 9. Thanks for listening.